Now, imagine something so powerful that it could rip the atoms of your body apart in a fraction of a second. Ow! This something is soundlessly dashing through space, not extinct, not alive, stuck in between. If this terrifying monster were moving towards Earth, we'd be doomed. So, is it? Astronomers have found a fast and powerful space object zooming through our home Milky Way galaxy at over 110,000 miles per hour, as faster than any rocket we've ever made. This bizarre space object got its name of a zombie star, all because it's the leftover part of a star that passed away a long time ago, but is still moving. This zombie star is a kind of an object called a magnetar, a super small, super heavy ball about the size of a city but heavier than the sun. That makes it one of the densest objects in space. Only black holes are denser. Hey, let's not forget about me, huh? Magnetars also have an incredibly strong magnetic field. The one our zombie guy has is 100 trillion times stronger than Earth's. That's so strong that if the magnetar came close to Earth, it could wipe out every credit card on the planet just from its magnetism, and we couldn't shop anymore. Plus, if a person got too close to a magnetar, like 600 miles or so, it could pull their very atoms apart, and they couldn't shop anymore. Luckily, this magnetar is very far away and not coming near us. When it was first discovered, it was about 15,000 light years away from Earth. That's a huge distance, so you don't get to worry about your atoms being disconnected yet. Astronomers first spotted the zombie magnetar in 2008. And since only about 30 magnetars are known in our galaxy, it was a lucky and rare find. Scientists use space telescopes like Hubble and Gaia to watch it over time. That's how they discovered it was moving much faster than they thought. Now, astronomers are trying to figure out how this zombie star got such a big kick. At first, they thought that, like most magnetars, this one was born when a giant star exploded in a supernova and the leftover core became a super-dense neutron star. According to their theory, it could have happened near something called Supernova Remnant HB9. That would make sense, since most magnetars are created this way. But when they tracked its movement, they found that the zombie star was moving too fast and going in the wrong direction to have come from HB9. They traced its path thousands of years into the past and still couldn't find any exploding star or star cluster it could have come from. This means scientists now have one more mystery on their hands. Where did the zombie star come from, and how was it made? One explanation is that it came from a white dwarf, which is the leftover core of a smaller star like our sun after it runs out of fuel. Now, Normally, when white dwarfs explode, they're destroyed completely. But in rare situations, instead of blowing apart, a white dwarf might collapse into itself and turn into a neutron star. This neutron star could then become a magnetar. This unusual way of forming a magnetar also gives clues about another mystery – fast radio bursts, or FRBs. These are very quick and powerful flashes of radio energy from deep space. Some FRBs come from galaxies that are so old, there shouldn't be any exploding stars left. But if magnetars can be born from collapsing white dwarfs, that might explain how those FRBs are still happening. In any case, learning how magnetars form could help us explain many strange and powerful events we see across the universe. But so far, the investigation is still on, and no answers have been found yet. Zombie stars wandering across the universe isn't the only mystery we haven't solved yet. At one point, you might come across one of them while traveling through the cosmos. It looks like eh, nothing. At a distance of 700 million light years away from Earth, there's a hole, a blank void that has very few galaxies. This is a roughly spherical region about 330 million light years across. Our home Milky Way galaxy could fit there thousands of times over. It's the mysterious Bode's void in the constellation of Bode's. Yeah, that makes sense. You see, galaxies look like a giant web. Most of them are parts of long structures called filaments. Those wind through the cosmos, and when they meet, they form regions with a high concentration of galaxies. These regions are what we know as galaxy clusters. But between these clusters and threads, there are huge, empty voids that hardly contain any galaxies. 
Such voids make up almost 80% of the observable universe, and most of them are huge, from 30 to 300 million light years wide. The Bode's Void is one of the most massive ones. It has even earned the title of Super Void. Astronomers think it might be the result of a few smaller voids merging. But what could have caused such giant empty areas to appear in the first place? The reason might lie in the origin of the universe. In its early days, I wasn't around then, all the matter in the universe was packed together quite tightly. Astronomers even thought it was something like a uniform soup. But soon, random quantum fluctuations started disturbing this matter. Some areas became denser, and their gravitational pull became stronger. They began stealing matter from less dense regions. This made such areas even denser, and they kept attracting more and more matter. At the same time, smaller clumps of matter started drifting further away from the center, forming galaxies. If you visited a star cluster called Palomar 5, you'd forget all about voids and supervoids and even zombie stars. Instead, you'd need to concentrate on surviving, since the region is hiding a swarm of over 100 black holes right in the middle. And those black holes aren't just sitting there. They're at work, shaping the cluster nonstop. Palomar 5 is a group of stars located about 80,000 light years away from us. Normally, clusters like this are dense and tightly packed, with stars all bunched up together. But Palomar 5 is different. It's spread out and has a huge tail of stars stretching across 30,000 light years. This beautiful tail is called a tidal stream. It's like the stars are spilling out of the cluster, creating a long river of light. Tidal streams like this are rare and hard to study. Globular clusters like this one are super old. Some are almost as old as the universe itself. But Palomar 5 also stands out because it's the only cluster we know about that still has a tidal stream attached to it. And the black holes inside the cluster might be to blame. They're pulling on the stars in the cluster, messing with their orbits, and slingshotting them right out of the cluster. Or would that be slingshooting? I don't know. Anyway, these stars are what make up the tidal stream. Over time, more and more stars get flung out. Palomar 5 has way more black holes than expected. About 20% of the cluster's mass is made up of black holes, over 100 of them, each about 20 times the mass of our Sun. Of course, Palomar 5 isn't going to last forever. In about 1 billion years, the cluster will completely fall apart. By then, all the stars will have been gone, leaving behind just the black holes. And these black holes will orbit the Milky Way, like a ghostly remnant of a cluster that used to be there. Even though this cluster is creepy enough, there's something even more eerie you can see in space. Thick clouds of gas and dust, called nebulae. One of the most unusual ones is probably NGC 2392, located 5,000 light-years away from Earth in the constellation of Gemini. It was discovered more than 200 years ago and became popular because of its unusual appearance. It's basically a disk of material with a ring of comet-shaped objects. The tails of these objects stream away from the star at the center of the nebula. The bizarre orange streaks in the outer part of the cloud stretch light years away in all directions. The middle resembles a ball of twine, but in reality, it's a bubble of material blown into space by the wind of high-speed material produced by the central star. Wow. A mysterious visitor has just entered our solar system and is zooming through it at a crazy fast speed of 152,000 miles per hour. It's faster than anything we usually see, and it's not slowing down. How fast will it reach Earth? Will the world end when it does? Let's see. This space traveler first popped up in telescopes that watch the night sky all the time, called Atlas. This system has eyes in Hawaii, Chile, and South Africa. They spotted the bizarre object on July 1st, and it's moving straight toward the sun at that crazy rate. What's even weirder? It's flying in a straight line, not how things usually move around here. At first, scientists thought, whoa, this thing isn't from around here, meaning it was an interstellar object, a visitor from far outside our solar system just passing through with enough speed to not get stuck by the sun's pull. Then NASA stepped in and gave this object a name, 3I Atlas. 
turns out, it's most likely a comet, a big, dirty snowball flying through space. You won't see it with the unaided eye or a normal telescope, but lucky for us, there's a free live stream from a powerful telescope in Italy where you can watch this mysterious traveler zoom by. We've only seen two other interstellar visitors before, one called Borisov in 2019 and the other back in 2017. You might have heard of Amuamua before. Some thought Amuamua might be a spaceship from another civilization, but nope, just a strange rock. Scientists think there are lots more of these cosmic visitors out there, just sneaking through without us noticing. And this newly discovered one proves it. But how exactly did it get spotted? It happened on July 1, 2025, way out in Chile. At the time they saw it, it was about 4.5 times farther from the Sun than Earth is, and it was moving fast. Unlike the planets and usual space stuff that orbit the Sun in nice neat loops, this comet is on a hyperbolic path, meaning it's just passing through, not sticking around. Its orbit is super stretched out. This comet is tricky to size up because it's wrapped in a cloud of shiny dust making it hard to tell how big the solid core really is. Scientists guess it's somewhere between 0.5 and 15 miles wide. The comet is going to swing closest to the Sun, this point is called perihelion, on October 29, 2025, at just over 1.3 times the distance from Earth to the Sun. One of the coolest things about this comet is that it likely came from the thick galactic disk, an old part of our galaxy filled with ancient stars. That means this traveler could be over 7 billion years old. He says I'm a grumpy old man. It's possibly packed with water ice from ancient times. In other words, it's a speedy, mysterious comet from far beyond that might hold secrets about the early universe hidden in its ice. Anyway, when scientists first noticed this comet, everyone was a bit puzzled. Was it just another asteroid or something more unusual? The path it was on looked so wild that astronomers actually thought it might come close to Earth. So it got added to a special watch list. But as more specialists checked it out, it became clear this was no ordinary space rock. This visitor was on a hyperspeed path that wasn't just around the Sun. It was coming from outside our solar system. Later, it turned out that even before the July 1st discovery, this comet had already been spotted in earlier photos from the end of May and June. But no one knew what it was back then, because it was hiding in the dense, star-filled area near the center of our galaxy. So it was like trying to spot a firefly in a fireworks show. At first, some astronomers thought it might just be an asteroid because it didn't seem to have that usual fuzzy glow or tail that comets have. But by July 2nd, Powerful telescopes in Chile, Arizona, and Hawaii caught a faint tail and a little cloud of dust around it, the classic signs of a comet. And once they confirmed this, the comet got its official name. Lots of telescopes jumped in to get a better look. One spotted a tail stretching 15,500 miles long. That's longer than the distance from New York to Los Angeles. Others noticed that the dust around the comet had a reddish tint just like the dust from the last interstellar comet. Scientists even tried to figure out if the comet was spinning, but couldn't tell because the dust cloud was hiding its core. The Hubble Space Telescope is going to take a look later in July, and scientists worldwide will get access to its data, so everyone can learn as much as possible about this cosmic visitor. So, the comet is going to get its closest to the Sun around October 30th, coming in to about one and a half times the Earth-Sun distance. Right before that, it's going to swing relatively close to Mars, about 0.4 times that Earth-Sun distance away. So Mars will get a close-up look. But don't worry, when it comes to Earth, the comet isn't coming anywhere near enough to cause any trouble. The thing is, when 3i Atlas zooms closest to the Sun, Earth will be on the other side of it. That means the comet won't get anywhere near us. Its closest pass to Earth will happen later in December, when it's already heading back out of the solar system. 
NASA says it won't come closer than about 1.6 times the distance between Earth and the Sun, so no worries there. Scientists are super interested in where 3 i Atlas actually came from. One recent study says it probably hails from a part of our galaxy called the Thick Disk. That's where most of the stars in the Milky Way dwell. But they still don't know exactly which star sent the comet our way. One of the researchers says it could have come from tons of different stars, not just the ones nearby. That's because this comet is likely to be super old. It might have been drifting through space for billions of years before finally zooming past us. Scientists think it came inside Neptune's orbit back in 2023, and it'll pass by Neptune again as it heads back out in 2028. Depending on where you say the solar system ends, it could take decades for this visitor to fully leave our neighborhood. Now, could 3i Atlas be a spaceship sent by another civilization? The answer is almost definitely not. Back in 2017, when the first interstellar visitor, Oumuamua, showed up, some folks thought it would be a disguised space probe. That idea came from weird things about how it moved. They didn't quite add up. But 3i Atlas is acting like a totally normal comet. No strange moves or surprises so far. Still, some scientists are curious and want to check if 3i Atlas shows anything unusual, like tiny boosts that aren't caused by gravity. You might be wondering if we could actually visit this comet. Well, we've sent spacecraft to some space rocks before, like NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission, which landed on an asteroid called Bennu in 2020, grabbed some samples, and brought them back to Earth. That was a big deal! People have thought about doing the same thing with other interstellar visitors, but for now, visiting 3i Atlas just isn't happening. It's a wild comet zooming through and we don't have any missions ready or built to catch up to it. So right now, astronomers are in a bit of a race to learn as much as they can about this rare visitor before it disappears again. They've got until the end of September to study it before the sun's glare hides it from view. But then, in December, when it pops back out, they'll get another chance. Big telescopes like the Vera C. Rubin Observatory, the most powerful optical telescope out there, are ready to snap some pictures. There's even talk about using the James Webb Space Telescope, and maybe even NASA's rovers on Mars, to catch a glimpse as it speeds towards the sun. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.